responding to loss and change with resilience. And so a few assumptions that I'm making here that when we're faced with loss and change, we have to respond in some way, given that we're alive. We have to do something when we're faced with loss and change. And so often what happens is our coping skills get called on. And, and sometimes they get tested. Sometimes we find that our coping skills aren't up to the task. Some attempts to cope might be helpful in just letting us get by, allowing us to survive, but not much more than that. But our question for today is, how might we cope in ways that allow us and our communities not just to survive, but to thrive, to flourish? And that brings us to this territory of resilience. And here are two definitions that I have found that I like. The first is from an article some of you may have read in Time Magazine just last June. The cover story was on resilience. And so I'm gonna be drawing on some of the research that was presented there. But this is a definition offered by that author. Resilience is essentially a set of skills as opposed to a disposition or personality type that makes it possible for people not only to get through hard times, but to thrive during and after them. Just as rubber rebounds after being squeezed or squished, so do resilient people. Okay, what's, what's key there is it's a set of skills versus a personality type, which is right out of the gate a very hopeful statement. It is not the case that, well, if you're lucky, you're born resilient. And if you weren't born resilient, oh boy, good luck with life. It's, it's just this, the research is, is unequivocal. Resilience can be learned. So very hopeful statement. And this second definition from a PBS special um, called this emotional life. We have many ways of overcoming adversity. Resilience is the capacity to adapt successfully in the face of threats or disaster. People can improve their capacity for resilience at any time of life. Yay, yay, so hopeful. Now, I think it's interesting and important to kind of tease out a little bit, what is the relationship between resilience and self-care? Because aren't we very, very familiar with talking about self-care and ministry? And, you know, some people take to self-care like a duck to water, and, and other people feel kind of resistant to it, like, no, you know, I'm about something else in the world. Um, what does that have to do with resilience? And part of why this question has occurred to me is because I had a conversation with a group of people last year, and we were talking about self-care, and some of them said something really helpful to me, which is that in their experience, some of the folks in ministry that they know are so dedicated to self-care that they never actually get to do the ministry itself. <laughs> so helpful to me because in my experience it's kind of the opposite. I've met, I've met more people who are kind of resistant to self-care. It feels selfish or, or self-absorbed, but that's not their experience. And of course that makes sense, right? Everything tends to exist on a continuum, so there would be those who would be really devoted to self-care. So, so that's why I'm posing this question for us. And I found a, a very helpful way of thinking about the relationship on the website of the American Psychological Association, they have a whole, um, uh, whole piece there called The Road to Resilience. It's quite good. But this is what they say. Taking care of yourself, there's the self-care, helps to keep your mind and body primed to deal with situations that require resilience. I find that helpful. So self-care is a means of building or cultivating resilience. It's not an end unto itself, 
okay? But we need some self-care in order to become more resilient people. We're creating a mind and a body and spirit that can bounce back when adversity strikes.